morning, I invite you to join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have met us in such a radical way that sometimes we don't even recognize you. We give you thanks that you are with us as we spend time this morning peering in just briefly into your word. Lord, I pray that our hearts will be challenged. I pray that our hearts will be pricked and our consciousness will be enlivened by new possibilities that you call us to. It is in your holy name we lift this prayer to you today. Amen. If you're to look at the word radical in the dictionary, you'll find the following definition. Radical is relating to or affecting the fundamental nature of something. Relating to or affecting the fundamental nature of something. Far-reaching or thorough. I've got a couple questions for you, and as I continue to read through the scripture text in just a couple of minutes, I want to ask you to find yourself in the story. Ask yourself where in the story do you hear radical something? Radical trust, radical love, radical obedience. And then ask yourself when the last time you were that radical. So when was the last time you did something radically? When was the last time you radically loved someone? Radically served someone? Radically sat with someone in their pain and their grief? Radically walked a picket line or a protest line with someone? radically fought for the rights of someone so fundamentally different than you. Brothers and sisters, here's what I'm concerned. I believe that perhaps we in the Christian faith universal, this collective sense of us, have lost the radical nature that Christ called us to that is inherent to our Christian faith. I wonder if we settled for our own comfort instead of being uncomfortable perhaps loving someone who is not quite like us. Because remember, just like Jesus taught us and Jesus challenged the times and the people of his time, faith isn't about being comfortable. Our faith is about taking chances, about looking into the heart, into the eyes of someone else, and not just seeing them, but embracing them, all of them, their humanness, every last bit just like we want others to embrace us. So as we get into the scripture, I'd like to set the context a little bit. If you look at Matthew chapter um, 5, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 14, the scripture text comes specifically from uh, verses 23 through 33, but I want to give the context a little bit. If you were to turn to your Bibles, if you have it with it, you can see that John the Baptist had already been beheaded, and this was obviously very troubling to the people of the time, clearly troubling to Christ, because after, as a result of this, he distanced himself from the people. He went up to the mountains and he prayed. Later on, Jesus comes down and he sees as the text shows us this, 5,000 people, and he feeds the 5,000 people, setting the context. So after all of this, Jesus has heard about Jesus, John the Baptist being beheaded. He's fed these 5,000. He's preached to them, and he goes away in solitude to pray, and he sends his disciples out ahead of him in the boat. And this is where we find today's text, today's scripture. Matthew 14, 22 through 33, and I invite you to read along with me. And as I do, I remember that I challenged you to look for yourself in this text. Look for that radical trust. Look for that radical obedience. Look for that radical love and ask yourself whether or not you would have the radical faith to do the same. Matthew 14, 22 reads, Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead on the other side while he dismissed the crowds. Brothers and sisters, I think this is a demonstration of radical trust, trust that Christ had in his disciples to send them out because they were following. They wanted to sit by his side. They wanted to sit at his feet and, and nurture and be nurtured by his wisdom, but he sends them out. He trusts them enough to wait for him. Verse number 23, and after he dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain to pray by himself. When the evening came, he was there alone. The scripture tells us he was there alone, but if you believe 
what the Christian faith tells us about who Christ was. He was not alone, was he? If you went up to pray, then he was not truly alone. He was with the Father. And in all of his godness, he was also with, and everyone was with him. Because he cannot divorce himself from the fact that he has this humanity in which he cares for. He cannot divorce himself from the fact that he is connected intimately as one of the three people in the Trinity to the Father. So although the texts say that he was alone, I think they were just saying that there were another, no other human beings around him. And in that, I believe that Christ is demonstrating a radical sense of trust. That he can dismiss these people, he can send the disciples out on a boat, he can go, and he can be physically alone, away from other people, but knowing that he is truly not alone. Verse number 24 reads, But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far ahead of the land, for the wind was against them. Continuing on, number 25. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. I sometimes wonder or not Jesus had to remind himself who he was before he did these miracles. Before he stepped out onto the lake, did he have to remind himself, you know what, I can do this because... Well, I'm, I'm God. Or did it just happen naturally? If you believe it just happened naturally, that demonstrates that radical trust that he had in the Father, that the Father was going to walk with him, literally, because Jesus' human form would have sank. But in all of God's godness in Christ did not. That is a radical trust that the human, the man Christ had in God the Father. Number 26 says, But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And we have no indication to believe that the disciples in the boat doubted that. That demonstrates a sense of radical trust. That the disciples, that, that, that their master that was coming to them was who he said he was. Even in the midst of this storm. That's very radically trusting. Verse number 28, Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out to you on the water again. Trusting that if this is Christ, if this is Jesus, it will be done. There was no evidence of doubt anywhere in Peter's mind at this point. And probably one of the more commonly known verses in the entire scripture, especially in the New Testament, verse number 29 says, He said, come. So what did Peter do? He demonstrated incredibly radical trust. I'm talking rad radical trust with a capital R and capital T. He got out of the boat and started walking towards Jesus. The faith that he had in Christ that said, get out of the boat and walk towards me, that radical trust which goes against every fundamental law of physics that we know, it reaches thorough. It goes across all known expected expectations of the time and of understanding. He did it. It wasn't that he stepped out and then sank, but he stepped out and walked. And yes, if you know the rest of the story, it goes that Peter looked around and he got scared by the waves and he lost some of that radical trust. Perhaps he questioned his own faith for just that brief moment and he begins to sink and then Christ reaches down and he, he picks him up out of the water. A demonstration of what Christ will do for us when we are sinking, when we put our radical trust in Him, when we are allowed for Him to come into our lives and radically change the way that we see ourselves, radically change the way we see others, radically change the way we see our politics and our finances, everything about us. We need to get out of our comfort zone. We need to be uncomfortable if we are going to call ourselves Christians. Clearly, the disciples at the time were not comfortable. They demonstrated radical trust and obedience. 
even unto death. And going on, just so we can finish this particular scripture, he says, but when he noticed a strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink, and he said, Lord, save me, like we just talked about. And he immediately reached out his hand and says, you have little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. I wonder sometimes if we can look at this story and say, yes, Peter had that trust. He had that faith. I don't know if I could be the same way. I don't know whether or not I would have gotten out of the boat. I have certainly questioned myself whether or not I would have been able to get out of the boat. I can honestly say that there's probably a time in my life, maybe 30 minutes ago, where I'd have been like, uh, okay, no, not it. You, you go. Because I doubt but I also recognize because the world that we're in today that perhaps the reason why we are in the world the way that we are today as Christians is because many of us, not all, but many of us have gotten so comfortable and refuse to be challenged. To refuse to be challenged on new ways of thinking, new people to love, how to love radically how to embrace someone that sometimes on the outside seems so very different than us brothers and sisters fundamentally that's what christ calls us to do because christ did that for us he called the disciples to do it and everyone who calls themselves a follower of christ are called to that kind of radical faith radical trust radical love So I challenge you, if you do not find yourself doing something radical today, spend some time in prayer, alone. Not completely by yourself, because we believe that Christ, through the Holy Spirit, God through the Holy Spirit is with us. But by yourself, so you're not surrounded by another human being. Spend some time in prayer, asking God to challenge your heart into radically loving the way that he radically loved us. Please join me in prayer. Eternal God, you are present with us throughout our lives, even when we plot to do harm to others and others plot to do harm to us. May we live and may we learn to live in radical unity with each other, that in all that we do, we may sing your praises now and forever. Amen. Thank you.